go into a class, the last thing that you want is to feel unprepared. Right? Nobody wants to show up and feel like they don't know what they're doing or they're holding people up or anything like that. So in our last video, we talked about what you actually need to take to the range, what you need to put in your bag. Some of that was mandatory. Some of that was just a really good idea, like a notebook. Always take a notebook and make sure it's okay, but take notes. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna break down what you need to be able to do with that rifle, okay? And we're gonna center this around the rifle classes. We'll do pistol later. So first thing we need to be able to do is one, you need to be very, very aware of your weapon handlings, right? And the weapon operations or the operation of the weapon itself. So to do that, we're gonna cover a few things. One of them is gonna be how to clear and load your guns, right? Which sounds like common sense, However, you'd be pretty shocked how many people are not smooth and can do that correctly every time and don't have to think too much about it, right? Then we're gonna break down a little bit of malfunctions. Uh, then we'll also talk about just how we manipulate the safety with the rifle, right? And what, how you need to think of that. After that, we'll go ahead and get into fitting the rifle to you and your body so you don't look all weird and awkward, right? Set yourself up for a little bit of success. And then finally, we'll wrap it up and we'll do basic shooting skills that you need to show up. And we're just gonna say, hey, if you can do this, you're probably good. Talk to a couple of people in the industry and they kind of agree, generally, this is what we're looking for. So we'll help you get prepared, make you feel a little bit better so you can take all that in, in the class and everything and just focus on learning and not be too worried. So basic weapons operation, right? So we're gonna cover a few things in this, but the main thing we're gonna talk about right now is gonna be just being aware of your muzzle, right? Like we know like the four firearm safety rules, like always, you know, don't point your muzzle at anything you're not willing to destroy, always be aware of your muzzle, this and that. And we've heard the stuff where people say, imagine there's a red laser coming out of your muzzle at all times, right? So we're gonna cover that a little real quick. So a couple things, right? So one, the weapon should only be up. Let's just imagine this is the shooting line right here. Right, so I'm gonna scoot down here just a little bit, but imagine this is the shooting line right here, okay? The barrels are just people, right, or whatever. But if this is my shooting line and we're shooting the targets down there, where does my, my muzzle go? It goes that way or it goes down, okay? So one thing to remember is if I got the rifle and I just got it's cleared out, it's hanging off my hip, fine, it's pointed down, right? I can walk like this and put my hand right here, everything else. But I always wanna be aware of where the muzzle is at all times. And this is something that people just generally forget, right? Especially at first. You know, military and law enforcement, they tend to do a little bit better job because they went through some training course where like there's somebody just screaming and yelling at you if that muzzle, you know, cross it's like, uh, you know, it's like holding the flashlight for your dad kind of deal. Like you learned pretty damn quickly. However, that doesn't apply to everybody. All right. And however, it doesn't mean because you weren't that you can't have good muzzle discipline. But first things first, we know the gun muzzle can always be pointed down range. Everything's good. All that. Where people get in trouble is if I'm squared up down range, if I want to leave the line, I bring the muzzle straight down like this, then I can turn. Muzzle down, then turn and go, is what we say. However, where people get in trouble is they do this stuff and they kind of keep the gun right here and they just don't think about it and they're like, oh yeah, uh-huh. And then they turn like this and bring the muzzle down as they turn. Well, what happens? Now you just flag the line, okay? So that just shows that you're inexperienced. So always square up down range when you're done shooting, then bring the muzzle straight down, then you can turn around and go, right? It's a little bit different if you're just on the range with like a buddy and you're having a training session, but in a class, you gotta remember that there's a lot of different people there, right? So there's safety precautions in place and those safety precautions are there for a reason, right? Cause we just, you know, part of it's kind of that lowest common denominator thing. However, doesn't always apply to everybody. So remember it's there for a reason. It just makes it easier on us as instructors to go, oh, cool, man. Everybody seems good, like let's run around. Like I can trust these people, they're good, there's no issues. Let's start getting after it. We, maybe we can do some stuff that maybe we wouldn't do with other types of people. You know what I mean, that weren't as experienced. So just demonstrate that, it's gonna be a lot better. One of the best ways to think about it is the 180 rule. So if you look at competition shooting, they have a 180 rule, right? So if this is the shooting line, targets down there, 180 degrees, my muzzle will not ever break that 180 degree line. Simple as that. And I think that's why the competition, like especially USPSA, the safety rules they have in place at a match are like great. Like just do that. You know what I mean? Like they have a safe table, you don't load till you get online, everything else, you clap before you leave. If you can follow that, you're probably good. So there's one little tip for you. Help to build in some of that awareness of the muzzle. We see problems is, <clears throat> right, is when people aren't just, well, one, not paying attention. But how do we reinforce that? If you're holding on to your gun here, right, and I just kind of think I point with my thumb or my index finger, however you like to hold the gun, when I bring that gun down, keep your hand on the handguard, right? 
and be aware of where you point your thumb so the gun comes down and then I can come around. Just staying holding on to the handguard like this a little bit longer helps me be aware of the muzzle. Where you're getting problems is when people like go like this and they kind of hold on to like, yeah, man, or they come back here and then they kind of adjust and they pick it up and they start moving it. We don't want any of that. The muzzle only comes up on the shooting line, down range. When you're done, it comes straight down and it stays down. So there's basically three directions the muzzle can go, right? One, down range, okay? The second direction is down, right? And then the third direction is down, okay? So just keep it down, fair enough. So with that said, some people will say, well, what about the high ready? You know, what if I go to here, you know? Like, why are you walking around the range behind everybody like this, right? Just fucking bring your damn gun down and, and you know, sling it to your side or whatever and carry on. Just for the purpose of class and everything else, keeping it same, same, so everybody's good, that's probably a good place to start and just always be aware of that, cool? Your muzzle goes onto the target, or it stays up to go on the next targets for the drill or whatever you guys are doing, but remember that 180 line, okay? And basically you can call it 179, right? But to there, then the muzzle comes down and it stays down as you go back to the loading tables and everything else by your gear. When you're back at your gear, take a look to left and right before you pick that muzzle up to set it down, right? If you're gonna lean it on something like the, the rifle rack or just by your truck, look around, check left and right, then bring the muzzle up and set it down. And that's pretty much it for that, right? But we gotta build that in. Helps a lot if you just got your hand on the handguard, point the thumb, then you kinda always know where it's at. Cool? Vertex ad time. So, Vertex, we appreciate it. They sponsor the channel. We're off to, if you go back, remember Tom's car, I'm trying to get him a new car. So that's, you know, one of the reasons we do it. The reason is they make nice shit. So, at this point, the RLT duffels are out that we talked about in the last video, but this is the 50 liter right here. I really like this bag a lot. Pockets on the inside, pockets on the outside. It's a great fit. I haven't seen too many bags that are like duffel bags with shoulder straps that aren't rigid that I still like throwing it over my shoulder and, and using that way like a backpack. Honestly, man, it's just a really impressive bag, the way they made it. They also got, this is a 50 liter, they also got the 100 liter rolly bag, right? So this is made as more of a gear bag for you. Big pocket, 100 liters. You can see inside, it's pretty barren inside. There's not a whole lot going on other than just put your stuff in there. They got a little pocket on the top flap and then they got your dry pouch, right? Dry pouch for everything else. Hard plastic shell on the bottom with your extendable handle as you cruise through the airport for hot dudes and just, you know, look stylish and all that stuff. Other than that, man, yeah, that's pretty much it. Appreciate the bags and check them out. I think we have a code for them, Tom. I think it's Bayer, just B-A-E-R. I don't know. I think there's a code. Try Bear if you buy some. See if that helps. I don't know. Maybe you get something off. So Loophold, I've been running them for a long time. We appreciate them sponsoring too. So I'll just kind of show you guys on our, this is on my 14 and a half BCM. So we got the Loophold Patrol 6 HD on here. Like this a lot. I was shooting uh, about 600 yards down at, uh, what's that place called? Twisted Precision Tom we were at? Yep. Yep, Twisted Precision twisted, outside of- Twisted Barrel? Twisted. Or was it just Twisted? Shit. At that place, we were running there uh, with Adrian from Sidewinder Concepts down there. Good dude. And he was calling some wins for us, and we were using these uh, 5.56, five, shooting at to 600 yards, basically hitting like six or eight inch steel plates at 600 yards, just one after the other. Impact. Woo! Impact. Impact. Um, liked it a lot. Uh, Mine was on this 14 and a half. Tom, would you shoot at? I run it on a 12, 12 and a half inch, and I was able to hit at 600 yards as well. That was interesting, doing that yeah. and just testing that out. Put the video in there, you gonna clip it in? Yeah. Yes. That's how high it is. And I uh, fucking hold two inches. Tink. There it is. See Tom shoot people. Anyway, we appreciate them. We like them a lot. Uh, this DP Pro and LCO. LCO 2.0 is coming out. Just saying. Now let's go ahead and get into our load and unload procedures, right? So I do it a little bit different than some people, but it's the way that we did it when I was in the military, right? And I really like it because it avoids some problems. But first thing to remember, you're 100% accountable for every bullet that goes into the gun. You're 100% accountable for every bullet that comes out of the gun. So you should always know the status of your gun, 
Okay, so first thing, the way it's gonna work, we're gonna load up our rifle. Uh, you're gonna lock the bolt to the rear. Well, first make sure it's on safe. Then lock the bolt to the rear, insert the mag, put the bolt forward. Simple as that, right? And there's more to it than that, right? We're gonna talk about some things to look through in between, but those are your like three big parts. Lock the bolt to the rear, put the mag in, put the bolt forward. Fair enough. Then when we clear it, it's pretty much the same thing. Make sure it's on safe, drop the mag, lock the bolt to the rear. That's it, right? So we're just gonna put it on safe, take the mag out, lock the bolt to the rear, okay? So let's go through all the steps and what we're looking for in between as we do it. So remember, it's a lot of stuff that we put out there, but it's super simple. You can simplify it a lot. So first things first, right? You got your weapon, your rifle, you're gonna go and bring it up in a safe direction, attempt to place it on safe and ensure there's no source of feed, right? So then I'm gonna lock my bolt to the rear, check your three points of contact, chamber, magwell, bolt face. Insert your first full loaded magazine, ensuring that it's properly seated. Bolt forward, observing the chambering of the round. Press check if needed, down in a safe direction, and complete. Unload, bring your weapon up in a safe direction, tend to place it on safe, remove your source of feed. Lock your bolt to the rear, observing the extraction and ejection of the round, make a mental note of where it lands. Check at three points of contact, clean chamber, magwell, bolt face. Bolt forward, take one well aimed shot down range, Rack safe, down and complete, right? So let's break that down so it's not as confusing and all these different words. And this gets really quick to do. You know, it's not, all, it's not as complicated as it seems, but you need to get really comfortable inserting the mag, locking the bolt to the rear, and putting the bolt forwards. So as we do that, one, bring a weapon up, right? Good to go. Just bring it up here so I can pin it under my arm and feel nice and comfortable. If it's down here like this, right? That's a lot of weight to be putting on your wrist if you're not pinching it hard. So just bring it up a little bit and kind of pinch it and kind of keep it right on your hip right here or those, those things that cinnamon rolls make and got your little love handles and all that crap. So do that. Now, all we're gonna do, lock your bolt to the rear. I like to kind of hook the buttstock on the inside of my ribs right there, push down on your lever and pull back. Okay, that makes it a lot easier. If I just have the buttstock on my side like that, now I know I've got my bolt locked to the rear. If you've got a bad lever, like the little levery things that come down here, or you know, like the Radian guns or the American Defense, the ADMs that have it like built in the receiver where you can lock to the rear, great man, cool, do that. Um, but if you're not, if you're using your actual lever, right? If I push this forward, bolt goes forward, all I do is I hook that to the inside, hold that down, and pull back. That makes it a lot easier than trying to be up here like, Oh, oh, it's doing weird stuff and you don't get it all the way or the buttstock's not touching anything. Simple as that, okay? So they say visually, mainly confirm, whatever. So I'm gonna look down at my chamber, make sure there's nothing in there, nothing in the magwell, and nothing on the bolt. So I just need to check those three places, not four, three places that a bullet could be. So a round could be. So I do a little like that, just go down, now I'm good to go, and we can load up our first mag, right? Load that up, I'm gonna hit the bolt release, see the bolt go forward, okay? Now, what? Ha why do we do it like that? Once that's done, that's it, man. You tap it, you know, forward assist and close your dust cover. But what do we do? Why do we lock the bolt to the rear? Well, that way I know it loads each and every time. How many times have y'all seen this? right? I'm sure you've seen that before on the range, right? Is it around the chamber? Nope. And it usually happens as someone goes click and then the mag just falls out. Bro, it's hilarious, right? And you feel dumb. So just to avoid that, the reason that happens is a lot of times people put like a couple extra, like one round too many in the mag, right? And you don't have that little extra bit, that thumbnail or like half a nail's length to actually seat the mag because the bolt's forward. If this is really tight and it's got an extra round in there and you can't push it down, when you go to insert the mag on a closed bolt, it won't seat. So we say, use your man hands. That's why you got to really hit it. You'll see people like, ah, and they smack it. And I'm like, okay, I got it. And then they rack the bolt. But the problem is the mag is not all the way in, never actually chambered around. So just lock your bolt to the rear first, insert it. Then there's no problem, right? So <clears throat> looking at that, now let's just do the same thing in reverse and talk about our uh, clearing procedures. So same thing, I'm just gonna bring the weapon up, make sure it's on safe. I'm gonna drop the mag, lock the bolt to the rear, 
And then I'm just gonna check my three points, chamber, magwell, bolt face. Bolt forward, take one well aim shot down range. Why? Because it's a really good dry fire rep. Rack safe, down and complete. So locking this bolt to the rear, why do we look at these three points when we take it out? Well, how many times have you ever had a round stuck in your chamber, right? It happens, right? We sit on the range a lot. Like it's not, it doesn't happen all the time, but it does happen. And somebody's probably experienced that once in their life. So for some reason, your bolt's not grabbing onto that round, right? And pulling it out, you're not gonna see that round eject, right? So I always look to double check because if I see some in there, I see some gold or that brass color, I'm like, oh crap. Let me drop that forward and do that again. And if it doesn't work, I'm not gonna sit here and just keep racking it for no reason, then get something to clear it out and solve the problem. So I always wanna look in there because the fact is sometimes this stuff breaks. It doesn't work all the time. Or you need to clean your gun. I'm probably one of those people who needs to clean my gun. But look in there, make sure, because it might not grab onto it, okay? The extractor might not be grabbing it, the cartridge well enough. Cool, so we do that. Um, and then that last part, we take that bolt forward. We take one well aim shot down range, right? I wanna put that hammer down so it's 100% clear, but it's just a good dry fire rep. Get your, don't half ass it, do one of these. I mean, take your time, one good shot, then rack it again so we can put the gun back on safe and we know the gun is clear. Cool. So with me, that's what we do. Um, but a lot of times we'll tell people just lock your bolts to the rear when you're done. You can skip that last part, but just lock them in the rear so we all know they're cleared out. That's our load and unload procedures with a rifle. So again, 100% accountable for a bullet goes in the gun, 100% accountable for a bullet comes out of the gun. It's really important to me that you see everything, excuse me, that you're doing and you confirm it visually and manually because we don't want you know, as you can bring in the gun, the mag falling out and you feel stupid. Uh, we, the guns break, the extractor might not grab onto the round or something and pull it out. So we always look in there to be sure. If you do it that way, you're never gonna have an issue on the range. You should never have a, oh, I didn't know it was loaded moment. Like there should never be any of that. That'll cut out a lot of the NDs, everything else, but you're 100% accountable for that. That means you can focus on the shooting and you're not overly concerned about safety because you know exactly what you did is right and you're good to go. Now we're going to talk about actually manipulating the safety on the rifle. So this is something that should be intuitive or like an automated effort or automatic or however you want to think about that, you know, motor skills and myelination, whatever, right? But this should just happen without having to think about it. Subconscious competence, all those big words. But this should just be something that happens without having to think about it. So here's kind of the rule behind, uh, with your safety. If I'm bring the gun up and I'm looking through the sights, gun goes on fire. As soon as I bring the gun down and I'm not looking through my sights and the gun comes down, gun goes back on safe. Simple as that. If I have the gun up and I'm shooting a target, I'm going to move to shoot the next target. I don't have to put the gun on safe until that string of fire is over. I bring it down on safe. If the gun comes down and out of my eyes, the gun is on safe. Once it comes up to my eye line, I put the gun on fire. Simple as that. So when you do that, your thumb should be staged on top right here. And I don't think about consciously like putting it on every time. I just kind of hook my thumb on top. So as it, the gun comes up, it just kind of naturally does it. Am I pushing down on it? Yeah, but I'm not like, I'm not bringing it up and then going like that. It just happens as the gun comes up. Now putting the gun back on fire, I'm gonna break my grip, reach across with the thumb or putting it back on safe, excuse me, reach across with the thumb and then I just bring it down. A lot of people try and do this still holding onto the pistol grip and they can barely do it. Break your hand open, reach across with the thumb and pull back on it. So again, as the gun comes up, goes on fire, boom, 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 boom. And from here, let me lock this through for you. Boom, 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 boom. And then from here, I'm gonna break my hand, pull it back as I bring the gun down. So just get used to bring the gun up on fire, down on safe, up on fire, down on safe. And it's as simple as that. We don't need to make it much more complicated about that, but if you can just remember that, that's gonna help you out a lot and get real comfortable doing it. People say, well, you know, I don't need to put my gun on safe. Yes, you do. You quit being a doucher, put your damn gun on safe. That's it, okay? Like if you're not looking through your sights, engaging a target or driving, moving the gun to the next target to engage it, it needs to be on safe. And sometimes I'll even put it on safe in between if there's just time, because it's just natural kind of habit. 
Like putting the gun on safe or onto, onto safe or onto fire cost you zero time. I've heard a lot of arguments. It's ridiculous. Just put your gun on safe. You can't say it's costing you anything. So might as well do it. Fair enough. Malfunctions, right? So if you get a malfunction, clear it. Okay. What we don't want you to have to do is to stand there and then you get the malfunction and you're like, Hey, my gun's not working. Right. We'll clear it, like fix it. A lot of people don't know. Right. So like in our class, we're not covering malfunctions. You should know how to do that before you even show up. So I'll give you this, right? There's a lot of information out there on malfunctions. There's a ton of videos, just Google rifle malfunctions and you'll probably see a hundred of them and they're super in depth. They'll tell you lots of shit, but I'm giving you two things, right? Well, actually kind of three, one slap rack. That should fix it. If it doesn't, cause it's bad ammo or whatever, that should probably fix it. If it doesn't slap lock drop. Okay. And if that doesn't fix it, it's probably a bolt override and you got to get up in there, you know, separate the bolt from the charging handles so the rounds will drop and you're good to go. However, let's go over that real quick. So <clears throat> if you're here shooting, bang, 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 and then all of a sudden you get, you know, something goes wrong. It's not firing, you know, the bolt didn't cycle, right? First thing we're going to do slap and then rack, right? So I want to rack the gun. It'll cycle to the rear, everything else, slap rack, and then get back on it. If that doesn't work, then what we're going to do is we're going to slap, lock, drop the mag. Now check out what you got. You can get up in here and do whatever and clear out rounds and then load it back up and get right back on it. Okay. And that should fix most of your stuff. So remember slap rack or slap lock drop. And now you can look at it and clear what you need. But do it in that order, and that should fix a lot of your stuff. And if anything after that, you know, hey, look it up and learn it, or you can ask the instructor. But that should solve probably, probably like 90% of the malfunctions we're going to see on the range. All right. So now we're going to talk about fitting the gun to you and just kind of some basic stuff on how to hold this. So if you go back, we did a video previously. I think it was called like Bears butt stocks and battle star glass. I don't know, whatever, but it's like a, that's what I said in the thumbnail kind of as a joke, but basically we're just talking about, you know, like how to fit the rifle to your body a little bit. So reference that video. It's from a few months back or a year ago. Um, it's on there and then we'll get a little bit more in depth, but first things first, right? Um, you want to show up and be able to hold the rifle and be comfortable with it. Now understand that you're going to a class, they're going to, they're going to help you out. They're going to teach you. They're going to, you know, modify things. They're going to move you around a little bit. So I just want you to get into a general position. Okay. So first things first, let's talk about our stance. So generally speaking, we want to avoid, and my, my thing is I don't, you'll see people that stand like this here and they're all their weights on their back and they're kind of like across their body like this and their heads cocked down and they're trying to shoot, right? So that's not generally how we want. So instead, square your hips up a little bit more. I just want my hips generally pointed towards the target. They don't have to be perfect, but it could be a little bit off, but generally in that direction of the target is where my hips should point, right? You know, just kind of bend the knees, kind of stance, whatever, like a basketball player or like a linebacker or safety or something. When I get here or a boxer, good. Now I got that flat chest and everything's nice and squared up. Can I blade my upper body a little bit? Absolutely, you can. But we want to avoid the excessive stuff that causes your head to kind of cock to the side. So I just want to square up my upper body towards the target. And here's what I'll tell you. If this is where I hold a pistol right here, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take that pistol away. And now that's pretty much my shooting stance, right? So I don't care where on the handguard this hand goes but right about where you hold a pistol is probably best. So I square up, everything's good. Nice flat shoulder. You can see that the gun, my head is not dropping down. It's not cocking off to the side. It's not doing all this. It's generally, it's coming down a little bit, but it's not too extreme. And I can hold onto the gun and from here, everything's in line so that the recoil this gun produces, which goes in a straight line, can go right into my shoulder. And remember that most important part is gonna be your shoulder itself. Now, if you can just do that and get into a position, let that person kind of give you their tips or what they think is right. I mean, you're paying to go hear what they think about shooting and they'll kind of help you out. But if you can just get into that stance and feel comfortable doing that, that's going to help you out a lot. So then they can make those minor adjustments to kind of fix some stuff. And what they're going to fix is probably that when you shoot, we want to make sure that the sight, right? Then when you shoot, the recoil generally comes straight back and back onto target, right? More or less the sight lifts up and down. 
it's not kicking out to the side and then you have to pull it all the way back over. We want the side to go straight up and straight down and it's not gonna be perfectly straight, but generally speaking, or just kind of vibrates over the target. But if it's kicking off to one side and settling there, they're probably gonna adjust you and how you impact the buttstock, how you hold the gun, and that's gonna fix some of that. So, but if you can get in that position, again, hips squared up, generally, chest generally squared up, wherever I hold that pistol is just pretty much how I'm gonna hold a rifle, and then I'm gonna keep that shoulder nice and flat so I can absorb that recoil of the rifle coming in. And that's all we really need. Two last things, buttstock. No. Yes. Also yes. Maybe yes, right? So here's why I say that. If your buttstock is all the way in, all you're doing is bringing this hand closer to the shoulder and you're, you're making your shoulder more narrow. So it doesn't have as much of a nice hard wall or platform to fire off of. But as soon as we move the buttstock out, that relaxes this hand and allows the shoulder to get a little bit wider and flatter for us to put the buttstock on. Last thing I'll talk about is on this is gangster grips, right? Like your forward assists and forward grips that we put on the guns. You've seen them like they come down here. They're angled forward a little bit. It kind of got that hook. Those are great if you like using them. What I'll tell you is take it off for the class. Most of the people that show, almost everybody that shows up, we have them adjust where their hand is to get a better result. Then what happens? It's right where that damn grip is. Right? Most of the people that put that on, I tell them to take it off and shoot without it for a bit, and they never end up putting it back on. But some people really like them. Like the, uh, I think it's called the, the CAG or the CAC from BCM. It's like the kinesthetic angled grip or some shit. It's got like a little curve to it. You guys know what I'm talking about. Someone put it in the comments. That thing's pretty good. I like it because it's a pinky stop, right? But really what those are is when you try to adjust your hand to get the better result, that grip is in the way. So what I suggest is take it off and then figure out in that class, you know, where you like it and play with it for a bit and then put it back on after. And if you put it back on, it's really just for like your pinky and your ring finger right there. It's like a little marker, or a little stopper, okay? But I don't want it to be right where my entire hand goes. Cool. So a couple things on that, fit the gun to yourself, square up, make sure your head's not cocking off to the side and get a good flat shoulder to kind of hold that rifle up. If I can do that, you'll be in a good position to take shots and then that instructor can help you out a little bit more. I know this is all pretty basic information, but what's the ratio that you normally find in your classes between people that need this information versus people that don't need this information? Well, first thing, it depends on the class and it depends on the part of the country too. Like, it depends on the range you're teaching at. It, there's so many factors that kind of go into it. But with, for example, like when I go to Utah, um, people in Utah are different. They like guns, right? And they like to train with them, okay? They're militant a little bit. I mean, I mean that in a positive way. And then the range we go to has a really good community around it and people that look for classes. Um, other places, not so much. You know what I mean? Um, it just kind of depends on, you know, people go where they know me or they know the local gun range and they're just kind of signing up. But what I'll say is in every class, we usually have somebody that is unprepared right now some of those people that are unprepared they show up and they recognize it and they go what do i need to do to be good here you tell them and they listen and they do that they don't get ahead of themselves they do anything like there was this one lady that showed up in uh pennsylvania phenomenal human being right she's she's great okay she was like i've never really shot a rifle i was like what the hell are you doing here you know she got so good by the end of the first day i had i didn't think about her at all she paid attention to everything she said you said she did everything she needed to do like and she took her time and focused on just those steps right she didn't get greedy being there and i really appreciate that um i had another dude uh in new york a few weeks after that he showed up and i kicked him out in the first i think hour and a half like he had to go right like he was unsafe he was not prepared he didn't know how to do anything so it really depends but i would say of the people there over half could get better at just weapons manipulation. You know what I mean? To be more comfortable. Um, they usually in a class, there's only maybe two sometimes, sometimes more, sometimes none, just depends the area, but that you say, hey man, you got all this shit down. Let's just go faster. Let's just shoot harder, shoot faster. Let's get after it. Like there may only be a couple people in the class that are like that. 
and everybody else needs, you know, we need to section this out a little bit more and really focus on some of this stuff. Um, does that answer your question? Half the people there need to get better at their gun handling, right? I think it's something they take, a, they take for granted. The Dunning-Kruger effect, right? Ooh, buddy. If you don't know the Dunning-Kruger, look this up, Google it. Basically, it means you think you're better than you are because this is all you know around you, but in reality, you suck, right? You have no perspective. Your perception is different than the perspective of what's going on around you, right? You have perception, but not perspective. So you suck and you don't think you suck, which is even worse and you're terrible. So anyway, I'll leave it at that. But I mean that, you know, respectfully, you suck, whatever, like in a playful, fun way, but you still suck. Now let's actually get into shooting. Last thing. So again, this is going to vary depending on what class you go to. But the general consensus is talking to a few people. And I, I heard this a while back from one dude. Um, I can't remember who it was, but basically they're saying do doubles at this distance. You should be able to pull the gun up, fire two rounds at that distance and hit nasal. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. But you got to be able to do that consistently and, re and have like repeatable, you know, make it repeatable. I'm like, okay, cool. So what is that distance? Well, we talked to some people and they would say, man, if someone, they got to be able to do that 30 yards, right? Some person like 25 yards. Some people are like, yeah, you can be able to do that 40 yards. Or I'm like, hey man, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I think what's more important is can you bring the gun up and confidently hit the target, right? So I would say if you can do that at 10 yards, you know, and do it and then demonstrate it at 20, like you're good, man. And then the A zone's a little bit bigger than you probably think it is. You know what I'm saying? But we're just gonna go back and do that at 10, 20, and 30 real quick. So the speed is not what matters. So for example, if I say, hey man, with a rifle, you should be able to go to 20 yards and bring your gun up on the beat, bring the gun up here and go bang, bang, and put two rounds in the A zone. I think that's pretty achievable for most people. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we'll talk about pistol stuff later and I'll tell you what some people have said. But for me, I think with a rifle, you should be able to go to 20 yards and bring the gun up and just go bam, bam. No time limit, no nothing, but just be able to put two rounds into the A zone at that distance. Again, don't worry about time, just make it happen. But then you should be able to do that, you know, nine times out of 10 or 10 times out of 10 or something like that. And if you take away the time standard and not rushing it, you should all be able to do it. Now, again, remember, like, you don't have to be the best shooter in the world to show up to a class, but you need to have very basic stuff down. And if you can do that, that's probably pretty good. And I, I can take the rest from there and tell you everything else and teach you how to do it, or some other instructor can too. We're still going to teach you, right? You don't need to show up knowing everything. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you should be able to do that. So first, let's do it from 10 real quick, and then we'll just walk it back to 20, then we'll walk it back to 30. So I'm showing you the 10 first because, hey, you got to start somewhere, right? So if you're having trouble with that, well, just cut the distance, move it up, go to 10, no big deal, and then work your way to 15, and then work your way to 20. Nice and easy, do that. So I'm just gonna shoot a few rounds from each one. All right, I'll bring the gun up, I'll shoot two rounds, and then do it a few times, and then we'll see what our hits look like. Good. Move back. Pull that one a little bit high at 30. Oh man. Yeah, I felt that little guy right back there. That was the, I think the second to last little string I did. As soon as I pulled that, I was like, you son of a, just hear like, you know, that voice in the back of your head calling you an idiot. Like that's how I felt with that one. But overall, yeah, man, that's all we got to do. Like, again, it doesn't matter what your speed is and how fast you shoot, but if you can just go, hey man, I'm just gonna shoot two rounds. You know, maybe it's a little bit slower, maybe it's a little bit quicker, whatever. But I think that 20 yard mark right there in the middle is probably a really good thing to be able to do. Go to the 20, shoot a couple rounds, right? Just bang, 
bang. And notice what your sight's doing. When you take a shot, is your sight coming back and coming back to where you originally aimed? Or is it like going all crazy, you know, and settling off to the side and you gotta pull it back? And just kind of refine that up a little bit with how you hold the gun. But again, you can just shoot two rounds at the 20 and do that, you know, if you get all 10 rounds or shoot 20 rounds, you know, 10 sets of two or something like that, and you get them pretty much all of them in the A zone, minus one or something, like you're probably fine, man. And that's good. That's a great thing to do to kind of figure it out. If you need to move up, move up. But generally speaking, most people say you should be able to perform on demand doubles at X distance. I think 20 yards is probably that middle ground for most people. Some like it, you'd be a little farther away and shoot a little quicker, right? And be a little more accurate and a little faster. Some people like you to be a little, you know, they don't care as much and you can shoot a little closer and you know, you don't have to because they're gonna teach you other stuff. So again, check with the person, email them, figure out what it is. But if you can do that, you should probably be good. All right, we're gonna do our gear breakdown like we always do. Uh, a lot of stuff here is just the same as in the past videos, um, for the most part. So, auto, noise barriers, earplugs, these things are great, obviously, I like them a lot. You gotta have ear pro, Oakley glasses, boop, 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 boop. All right, cool, man, so let's just go over, hey, new hats are on the site, new t-shirts are on the site, too. And then they're pretty sweet, and they add, subtract a quarter second from all your draw times and stuff, whatever. All right, so hey man, uh, rifle, so we're in the ripcord. As you can see, mine's pretty dirty and rusty, but like I gotta clean it. I don't like cleaning it. Um, ripcord, 13.7, pin welded, loopholed, um, LCO, LCO 2.0 is coming out, I think this next year. Uh, mod light light on here, not bad. I always turn my front my front sight around backwards because it's easier to push back down and pop up that way when it's sticking out in front. Other than that, sling from drop six. That's pretty much the rifle, man. So pistol, <clears throat> usually shoot a Glock 34. Uh, I don't use a front sight post on mine. And the reason I don't is because it fell off and I haven't put it back on yet. But DP Pro on the sight right there. I need to clean this bad boy. We just got back from a class, two classes where it was raining nonstop. Uh, other than that, just grip stipling by Lander's Weapon Systems. I like to cut that little guy out from the ones you get with your Glock. Just dremel that off and clip it on. So you got a little thing on the back. And then other than that, this is the trigger is the Glock Performance Trigger from Johnny Glock. So it's got his trigger shoe on it. But once you click it, you can keep dry firing it. Isn't that cool? That's why I like it. And it feels real nice lock. So it's a good trigger. Works well. Yeah, man. Other than that, that's pretty much it. So... Uh, bear belt, Voitech belt, Bayer, offset the buckle. These are Safari Land uh, quick mag carriers, S Tac, Safari Land holster that I've had for like 12, 15 years um, since I was in the military, still going strong. And then uh, just a dump pouch from HSDI and a little fast mag on the back. Other than that, that's pretty much it. We do have a Vertex range bag. Uh, I really like this thing, like, legitimately like it. And then ammo storage and everything here. And then you got your little ammo trays down there. So cool on that. And then Vertex Delta Stretch 2.0. Uh, if you guys get these pants, just remember, I wear a 3230 in almost every pair of pants I have. Carhartt jeans, I wear a 3330. Uh, and these, I wear a 34. Okay, so you're probably gonna have to go up like a waist size um, on these if you do get them. But it's the Delta Stretch 2.0s. Other than that, man, Ultra Shoes, Trail Shoes, these are superiors, and uh, yeah. And I got some tattoos by Drunken Spring Break Nights, if you know what I'm saying, and days. So there's always that. Go down to Spring Break and get hammered when you're 20 and get a shitty tattoo. Uh, other than that, <laughs> that's pretty much all I got.